This presentation will cover the installation procedure for the Dolby Atmos Connect Interface DAC3202 processor. The DAC3202 accepts Dolby's implementation of AES67 protocol and converts the bitstream to analog for downstream processing. There is one Ethernet command port for network communication. Also included are two RJ45 ports for Dolby Atmos Connect, one port for in and one port for out. Up to 32 analog outputs are available via four DB25 connectors, which have a Tascam pinout. The DAC3202 is 1U standard rack size. DC power is provided via the included power supply brick, appropriate to region sold. To receive logs and backup files, insert a formatted USB drive into a powered unit. Supported formats are VFAT, FAT32, FAT16, and NTFS, although FAT32 is most commonly used. After about a minute, two files will be loaded onto the drive. If the drive has an activity light, watch it for confirmation that the process is complete. The log file will be named DAC3202 underscore logs zero dot zip. The backup file will be named DAC3202 underscore backup zero dot DAC. If these files are on the flash drive already, then the next available sequential number will be appended to the file name to avoid overriding existing backups and logs. For example, DAC3202 underscore log one dot zip and DAC3202 underscore backup one dot DAC, etc. The system will also scan the USB drive for any restore files and apply them. Factory defaults can be restored by creating a text file naming it DAC3202 underscore restore underscore defaults and removing the .txt extension. A backup file can be converted to a restore file by changing the name DAC3202 underscore backup dot DAC to 3202 underscore restore dot DAC. If the system sees either of these files on the USB drive, it will restore the settings accordingly. To confirm that any settings are restored in this way, the system will save a file named DAC3202 underscore restore underscore complete dot DAC. At the conclusion of the restore process, the restore files are then deleted from the USB drive. If there is need to upgrade a DAC3202, the appropriate version dot DLB file for the upgrade should be stored on a USB drive. If the DAC3202 is rebooted with the USB drive containing that file mounted, it will initiate the upgrade process once it confirms that the .dlb file contains a newer version. The unit will automatically reboot once the upgrade is complete. Upgrade failure will revert to the previous version and perform the normal backup restore logs process. The interconnections between the Dolby Atmos Cinema Processor and DAC3202 are shown on this slide for reference. In this example, the CP850 is shown, but the same method applies when establishing connections with the IMS3000. The closed loop connection represented here can be helpful as a system failsafe in the event of communication issues, but is not a requirement. When adding a second DAC3202 into the system, Simply add another unit into the loop by following the out to in method indicated here. There are 16 analog outputs on the CP850. These outputs can be used with the outputs of DAC3202 units for a maximum of 64 outputs total. The three possible configurations are presented here. For all RJ45 connections, good quality CAT5E or CAT6 cable is recommended. Be mindful of 100 meter maximum cable length between devices to minimize communication issues. Fiber cable can be used for runs that exceed 100 meters. Having spare runs of ethernet cable is good practice. Adhere to the common practice of keeping data signal away from AC due to inductive interference. Wiring does not normally need to be in conduit, but confirm compliance with local codes. Dolby's implementation of AES67 is utilized on the CP850, IMS3000, and DAC3202 units, as well as the DMA product line. It has no limit to the number of devices, is routable and fully scalable. 
AES 67 is based on existing standards such as Dante, Livewire, QLAN, and Ravina. Although an open standard, Dolby currently uses our implementation of AES 67 exclusively with other Dolby devices. When using one or more downstream devices like an additional DAC3202 or DMA, connections can be made just like with Blue Link, optionally closing the loop. An alternate path is shown on the right in which all of the downstream devices are connected by a single Ethernet connection with no loopback. The DAC3202 default network settings are presented here. Navigate the web UI to the page indicated here to check and set network settings. The adjacent tab is shown for checking and setting Dolby Atmos Connect network parameters. In this example, the unit is set to channels 1 through 32. The slide shows the DAC3202 default scheme for Dolby's implementation of AES67. In this slide, configuration fields are shown side by side for a CP850, DMA32300, and a DAC3202. In this example setup, the CP850 is sending AES67 to DMA32300 for 1 through 32 and DAC3202 for 33 through 64. Fields are circled by color to indicate values that should match. Observe that in this example, the DAC3202 is set correctly for 33 through 64. Audio controls provide the ability to account for delay between devices with the control presented here. Audio controls also provide the user with the ability to generate pink noise to any individual output, which may be helpful in order to confirm that the speaker wiring is correct at this stage within the signal path. Once the DAC3202 is installed and configured, it is time to move on to the next stage in the installation process.